Hey everyone, and welcome back to our Bible study through the book of Deuteronomy. We're doing one chapter every day. Today we're doing chapter 12, and this PDF that you're going to see up on the screen, you can download it for free at tobelikechrist.com. There's a link down in the description. Check out the other links down there as well to some books that we've made, to my wife's business, and some other things. So Deuteronomy chapter 12, here we go. When did these events happen? We are still in about 1450 B.C., this is occurring right after the children of Israel, or the Israelites, also known as the Hebrews, finished up their time, their 40 years of wandering in the wilderness. Now, they've now made it to the borders of Canaan. They're just about to go in, but 1450 BC, roughly. In terms of our characters, we've got those Israelites, also known as the Hebrews. They, for a long time, were slaves in Egypt, but God gave them freedom. You remember with the 10 plagues? Now they've come to the land of Canaan. They're about to go into the land of Canaan. And remember, that was called the promised land because God had promised that land to the forefathers of the Israelites, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We've also got Moses. He grew up in Pharaoh's household in Egypt, but God selected him to lead the people of Israel out of Egypt and lead them to the promised land. And then in terms of our map, pretty much the entire book of Deuteronomy to this point has occurred in Moab. Moses is giving some speeches to the Israelites. He's telling them God's laws, reminding them before they go into Canaan. And that happened in Moab, probably on the plains of Moab near Mount Pisgah, which you'll see on the map. So I've broken this chapter down into two sections. The first section is definitely the biggest, verses 1 through 28, God's chosen place of worship. When the Israelites entered the land of Canaan and took it, conquered it from the pagan people who lived there, they were supposed to tear down all of the pagan holy places where false gods were worshipped. The true God was not to be worshipped in the same way that the pagan gods were worshipped. One thing that's interesting is that Moses tells the people that God was going to appoint a central place of worship once the Israelites entered into the promised land, and all sacrifices and offerings would be brought to God's appointed place in the future. We're told that while the Israelites were wandering in the wilderness for 40 years, God gave them some liberty in the way that they offered their sacrifices and their tithes. But in Canaan, everything was going to be centralized in this special location. We're also told in Canaan, or the people were told, that when they got into Canaan, they could kill and eat an animal at any time without having to bring it to the tabernacle, which is what uh, Leviticus chapter 17, verse 3 and 4 suggests that the people had to do uh, when they were in the wilderness. But that was not going to be required any longer if they lived far away from this central place of worship. They could kill an animal and eat it at any time, but they were still prohibited from eating the animal's blood. That is specifically called out in this text. And then the last section is just the last four verses, verses 29 through 32, Israel's relationship with idolaters. And this is going to continue on into Deuteronomy chapter 30, uh, 13, which Lord willing will do tomorrow. But Moses warned the people again not to engage with the idol-worshipping nations that lived on the west side of the Jordan River. They were not to learn about their, the, uh, the religious practices of these pagans with the intent of adapting their practices into the worship of the one true God. Because as we already mentioned, God was not to be worshipped in those ways. We're told that the nations that inhabited Canaan before the Israelites were involved in all kinds of things that God abhorred, that he considered just reviling, including burning their children as sacrifices to these idols. So that is Deuteronomy chapter 12, and that last point that we talked about is going to lead us into our application. Isn't it interesting that murdering innocent children in the name of worshiping a god has been repeated throughout history, and it is still continuing today. While we don't worship physical idols in our culture, you know, statues made of wood or stone or gold or whatever, we do kill the innocent so that we can worship our God. And who is our God? Well, it's worship of ourselves, right? So that we can continue living the lifestyles that we deem preferable without consequences. We think about this and you think, well, you may look at these pagan nations and be like, oh man, we, we're nothing like them. These people lived all the way back in history. But you, know, you look at these comparisons and you start to look at other comparisons between the sins that they struggled with, the sins that we struggle with in our culture, and we begin to, to ask ourselves, are we really that much different than the pagans who lived thousands of years before us? Or is the, the cycle of human sin actually very similar? 